Welcome to Decimats. In this lesson I'm learning to identify equivalent fractions and to name fractions as decimals. Now over here you can see I've got a shape which is split into thirds and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade in uh, two of those thirds Now over here I can write what that is, that's two thirds. Now I'm going to see if I can change this shape into sixths. And the easiest way for me to do that is to draw a line right through the middle here. So there are now six pieces, so I can write that in as my denominator. There are six pieces. And how many pieces are shaded now? One, two, three, four. So we can see from doing that, that two-thirds is the same as four-sixths. Now if I go down a little bit further, you can see I've got that two-thirds again. So I'll write that in over here. Two-thirds. But this time I want to see if I can change it into ninths. Well the easiest way for me to do that is to draw a line along here and another line along there. So you can see that I've now split it into ninths. So I'll write in my denominator, which is 9, the ninths, and I'll find out what my numerator is. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces shaded. So I can see that 2 thirds is exactly the same as 6 ninths. Now let's look at both of these that we've done, where we change 2 thirds into 4 sixths and 2 thirds into 6 ninths, and see if we can see any pattern. Well, you might have noticed that I can change a 3 into a 6 by timesing it by 2. And I can change the 2 into a 4 by timesing it by 2. Let's go down to the one we changed into ninths. I can change the 3 into a 9 by timesing it by 3. And I can change the 2 into a 6 by timesing it by 3. So you can see from this that you make equivalent fractions by multiplying or dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same amount. See here we did it by 3 to move it into ninths, and at the top we did it, uh, we multiplied it by 2, both the numerator and the denominator by 2 to get it into sixths. Now let's see if we can uh, use what we've just learned to change a fraction into a decimal. Well over here you can see I've got two fifths. Two fifths is shaded in red. Now I want to change this fraction, two fifths, into a decimal. The problem is I'm not very good at changing fifths into decimals, so I'm going to think to myself, how could I change this fraction uh, so that it becomes tenths? Because I'm good at changing tenths into decimals. Well, I know the denominator will need to be ten. And on my picture here, the easiest way to do that would be to draw a line right through the middle. And it's easy to see that I've now got four tenths. And that makes sense from what we learned earlier, because the denominator has been made two times bigger, and the numerator has been made two times bigger. And I'm really good at changing uh, tenths into decimals, so I know that four tenths is the same as 0 0.4, which means that two fifths is the same as 0 0.4. Now let's try another question, but this time let's try it without the picture. Um, I've got 5 25ths, and I want to show that as a decimal. Well, just like before, I'm going to find that hard to do, so I want to change it into an equivalent fraction, which is easier to change into a decimal. Well, I know that I can move 25 and change that into hundredths. That's easy for me to do, because all I have to do is times 25 by 4. Now since I've changed times the denominator by 4, if I want to make it an equivalent fraction, I also need to times the numerator by 4. 4 times 5 is 20. So 5 25ths is the same as 20 hundredths. Now I know that 10 hundredths, I'll write that over here, 10 hundredths is the same as 1 Tenth. So 20 hundredths must be the same. 20 hundredths must be the same 
as 2 tenths. But we can check that, just like we did before. Let's change this so that the denominator is now a 10. Well, to move 100 down to 10, this time I'm going to have to divide. I'm going to divide it by 10. Now, since I've divided the denominator by 10, I need to divide the numerator by 10. 20 divided by 10 equals 2. And we're all right. We've got 2 tenths here, and we worked it out over here that it would be 2 tenths. And it's easy to change 2 tenths into a decimal. It is 0 0.2. Now so far we've worked out all our equivalent fractions by using a strategy called between because we're going from this fraction to this one and this fraction to this fraction but there's one more way, like a double check that we could use. You notice that there's a relationship between the 5 and the 25 or the numerator and the denominator. If I times the numerator by 5, I get 25. And over here, if I times this numerator by 5, I get 100. And over here, if I times this numerator by 5, I get 10. If you make an equivalent fraction and you find that you don't have the same amounts here, it could be a times by 3 or times by 3 over here, and if they're not the same, it means you haven't made an equivalent fraction, you've gone somewhere wrong along the way. Now, this within strategy is also good for questions uh, like this. Let's say you had 4 twelfths and you needed to change that into an equivalent fraction and you were already given the numerator and the numerator was 3. So you're trying to work out what the denominator is. Well looking at that I can see it's very hard for me to change the 4 into the 3. So I'm going to see if I can use my within strategy to help me work this question out. So I look over here and I think, what's the pattern between the numerator and the denominator? Well, 4 times 3 equals 12. So now I know that I need to see this pattern over here. So if I times the numerator, which is a 3 by 3, I get 9. So 4 twelfths is the same as 3 ninths. And you can see here we've used the within strategy because here we multiplied by 3 and over here we multiplied by 3. Well, I hope you've found this lesson helpful. Um, for more lessons and a PowerPoint on this, uh, check out teachertools.co.nz.